right. Uh, yeah, we have one last section of my life with the chimpanzees to do. So I'm going to share my screen. And we're going to go ahead and get that pulled up. So let's take about a minute or two. Go over to Google Classroom and open up my life with the chimpanzees, please. Huh? For what? No. We are in ELA. Okay. So. Reload the page. All right, so I'm going to give you about two minutes. Let's go ahead and get this open. Alrighty, maybe not two minutes. That seems like a long time. How are we doing? Are we there? Good. Yeah. All right. Okay, let's go ahead and get one. I'm gonna hide the top because we don't need it. Um, no, we're actually still in language development. We're gonna do that last section called conventions. We didn't do the conventions one yesterday. Um. Technically, it's the last one we're going to do in the story, like in the Savvis website. We are going to have a Google Classroom assignment after this. But you'll still want to be able to read the story, so don't turn it in just yet. I mean, you can still see the story after you turn it in, but yeah. So we are going to do the conventions first, and then we have a writing assignment that we're going to do for the next two days after. So we're going to talk about commas, parentheses, and dashes, which are all different types of punctuation marks. Um, and it says that punctuation marks help writers organize their thoughts and divide sentences into meaningful parts. So a comma, we all know what a comma looks like. Does it show us? You can't click on it. It's a little thing. I don't know how to describe it. Let's see. Where's one in the story? There's one in the story. There's a comma right there after the S, comma. It signals the readers to pause, to just take a quick stop. It's used to separate words or groups of words in a list or a series. So usually it's lists that we use it in. So this example says the chimps ate bananas, comma, seeds, comma, flowers, comma, stems, comma, and meat. Commas are used to set off non-essential elements in a sentence as well. So basically, you can put a comma or around words, and if you're able to take them out of the sentence, your commas are in the correct spot for this one. So um, you can kind of do it with parentheses too. But a non-essential element is one that is not needed to convey the main idea of the sentence. So if you are able to take out the phrase that you put the comma around, then you have the commas in the correct spot. Let's see if there's an example somewhere close. So this right here. Can you see that on mine? It says, otherwise, I thought all the creatures of Gombe would be frightened. In this case, you could take out the words I thought and get rid of the commas, and you could say, otherwise, all the creatures of Gombe were frightened. Still a sentence, still works. They just added in some extra information and put commas around it. And she just said, I thought. Yeah, so I thought is an extra non-essential part of the sentence. You don't need it, but it gives more detail. So they put it in commas and added it in. So that's an example of that one. Let's see what our... Uh, 
this uh, chart here gives examples of different types of commas that are used uh, for the non-essential thing, where you can take the parts out of the sentence and it would be fine. So in the first one, David Greybeard, the boldest chimp, was the first that she met. You can take out the boldest chimp and you could still say David Greybeard was the first she ever met and it would still be a sentence. Same with the next one. You can take out hidden in the treetops and it would still be a sentence. And then in the last one, you can take out whom got all named and still have a complete sentence. Okay. So there's some info about commas. Now we have to talk about parentheses. Um, just like commas, parentheses also set apart non-essential things from the sentence. However, parentheses suggest that the information that they contain is even less important than the information in the commas. So it's just kind of like extra information that's not super duper important, but it's there. Yeah, just a little bit of extra information. Um, so our example here, chimps made tools parentheses, twigs or grass blades to gather food. So you don't need twigs or grass blades, and it's not that important of information, but it's there. It's helpful for us to know what the tools are made out of. It's just not necessary to be there. Um, there's another bit of, there's parentheses right here. It says the white skinned creature, that was I, and gave them a barking alarm call. So that part there, parentheses, that was I, isn't that important? You don't necessarily need it. We know that the white skinned creature that was in the jungle was her. She was the weird looking thing to the chimps, right? So you can take out the thing that says that was I. You won't need it, okay? So there's our parentheses. And then finally, we have dashes. Um, there's a few dashes in here, actually, in the same paragraph. This is a good paragraph, paragraph five. Um, here's one right here. Oops. Well, hang on. I'm just going to highlight it for a second. This one has a dash in it. It's literally like that line, a dash. Um, dashes are another thing that's used to set apart extra information, things that you don't necessarily need. Um, they have added effect of indicating, indicating that there's an interruption happening, that they're going to give you information that's not needed, but it's going to kind of interrupt your sentence. So the example on the right over here says, Jane Goodall was young, surprisingly so, when she first went to Africa to study chimps. So the surprisingly so is not necessary. It's non-essential. We do not need it, but it's a little interruption to your story or to your sentence to be like, surprisingly, she was young, right? You don't need it. Added information. But it kind of interrupts the middle of your sentence, and there's dashes around it to interrupt. So in our sentence over here that I highlighted, as I crossed a narrow ravine crowded with low trees and bushes, I got very close to a beautiful gold bu uh, bush buck dash a forest antelope about the size of a long-legged goat if we were to leave off the part that has dash a forest antelope blah 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 would we know what a red gold the bush buck is no. no so we don't need the extra information but it's helpful because it tells us what a bush buck even is first of all and it's just kind of added there to help us with the information but it's not necessary are these three kind of making sense? Mm -hmm. Honestly, they could all be used at the same in the same places. Like you can put a comma instead of a dash. You could put a parentheses instead of a comma. It doesn't really matter which one you use, as long as you are setting apart the extra information. I'm gonna get rid of this highlight because we don't really need it. There you go. So. We are going to do, uh, I'm going to grade this, so I'm not going to help you through it too much, but um, we're going to kind of read through each one and talk about what you need to add to each one. But I am going to have you do this part on your own. So number one here says, each of the following sentences should contain one or more comma, parentheses, or dashes, and add the indicated punctuation correctly. So far, part A, we're going to do one at a time, part A. The many supplies Jane and her mother brought 
included food, food, medicines, writing materials, blankets, and pillows. And they want you to add commas to this. So you only need to add commas, nothing else, just commas. So you're typing out this whole sentence again. Many supplies Jane and her mother brought. And then keep typing your sentence, but you need to add in commas in the correct spot. Is there a list that you need to add commas to? Is there added information that you need to set apart? Is there non-essential words that you need to put a comma around? Okay, so you need to figure out where to put those commas. I'm going to give you maybe two minutes. Is that enough time, you think? Two or three minutes? But you need to copy the whole sentence down and add in commas to the correct spots. There should be, let me see. There should be four commas in this. Four commas. Four commas is a lot. Okay, so you should add in four commas. Hmm. Yeah, you guys keep finishing the sentence. I just did not finish typing the sentence. Yeah, so you guys finish typing the sentence and add in the commas. I guess the hint there is that the commas go after where I ended, where I stopped typing. There's no commas in the first few words. It's all in the end. Which part? Yeah, so rewrite all of part A and add the commas where they need to be. The words are all fine. Everything's spelled correctly. You just need to add in the correct commas. Yes, you have to write it all over again. Type the whole sentence out. Like second grade? Maybe. I don't think you do a lot of commas in second grade. Do we do all three? Um, we're going to do them as we go. So in a minute, we'll look at part B and then part C. So if you want to go ahead, that's fine. But I'm going to give you guys a minute to work on them as we go along. It's one thing, like writing materials, like a pencil, paper. Mm -hmm. There are four in there. Mm -mm. All right, I'm going to go look at the second one, part B. This one says, chimpanzees eat mostly fruits, bananas especially, but also plants, stems, seeds, blossoms, and leaves. Um, if you look at part B, it gives you quite a good example of how part A should have the commas. However, in part B, you're going to add in parentheses this time. So rewrite the sentence, the whole thing and add parentheses. And you should only have one set of parentheses. So like an opening parenthesis and a closing parenthesis. You should have one set.
So it should be a few words or open parentheses, a couple of words, and a closed parentheses. So you need to add in parentheses for part B. When you're reading part B, you need to find the information on this one that's extra, something that you don't necessarily need to have in a sentence, and that's where your parentheses will go around, something that's not necessary. It's more near the beginning of the sentence on this one. Mm -hmm. I know. Okay, about one more minute on part B, and then I'm going to look at part C. Type it over there, Yoshi. All right. Part C. This time you're going to use a dash. So a dash is similar. You're going to put it before any extra information, something that kind of interrupts your sentence. So this one says that Jane discovered that chimps enjoy sleeping in comfort just as humans do, or just as people do. Where can you add a dash that would set apart extra information that's not really necessary? You don't need it in your sentence. Where could you add a dash? And your hint for this one is that it's near the end this time. Um, no, a parenthesis and a comma is not the same thing. Well, they look different. So the parenthesis is like the, right? I don't know how to describe it other than this, right? Parenthesis looks like that. And the comma is the little thing at the bottom. Okay. Oh, a dash on your keyboard is like you have to hold the shift button no you don't oh when you're looking for a dash yeah like where to put it um you're looking for something that kind of interrupts your sentence something that's not necessary to be put in your sentence you put it before the interruption so it goes right before the part that doesn't feel necessary. Because necessary means that you need it. You needed the information. <laughs> Unnecessary means you do not need the information. A dash is a line that shows that you're interrupting. Okay. All right. We'll do about one more minute for part C, and then I'm going to show you or read number two to you. Then log back in. Alrighty. For part two here, this is the last part we're going to do. I'm not going to have you guys do part um, 
the write it part. You don't need to write this part. But for part two, it says reread paragraph 15. Um, all of you guys are going to need to go to paragraph 15 because you're going to have to highlight some stuff in it. So everybody scroll down to paragraph 15. Okay. In paragraph 15, I'll reread it to you right now. You need to mark, like highlight, one example of a comma. So you need to find a comma to highlight. You need to find an example of parentheses to highlight. And you need to find a dash to highlight. So all you're doing is highlighting those three things as I read. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'm going to reread it and have you guys mark one example of a comma, one parentheses, and one dash. So paragraph 15 says, eventually I realized that the chimps I watched from the peak were all part of one group, a community. There were about 50 chimps belonging to this community. They made use of three of the valleys to the north of the Kokombe Valley, where our tent was, and two valleys to the south. These valleys had lovely sounding names, Kasapkula, Linda, and Rutanga in the north, uh, Mkenki, and Nasanga in the south. So there is an example of each in, those, in that paragraph. And sorry, I cannot um, read that very well. Those words are not easy to pronounce. But you should be able to highlight one example of a comma one example of a dash, and one example of a parenthesis. I absolutely see parentheses in paragraph 15. The parentheses are probably the easiest ones to see because you can physically see the parentheses. Think about math and when you see parentheses in math, it's the same thing. Mm -hmm. We literally just spent a week doing parentheses, PEMDAS. Oh, yeah. Parentheses. Oh, I thought you meant like this. No, those, that's an apostrophe. I thought that was what you were doing. So I was like, oh, I did it wrong because I was just parentheses. Yeah. Okay. All right. So I'm going to give you guys about one minute here, and then I'm going to explain what we're going to do after this, and then you guys are going to have some work time. No, we just did number two, the highlighting parentheses. Oh, in the notebook? Yeah, you can write skip. And we're not doing the write it part, so you don't need to do the writing part. Okay, I'm going to close this, the conventions one. Okay. And then I'm, you don't have to open this up, but I'm going to open up the effective expression and talk about um, the how-to essay that we're about to write. Um, it's not going to be super difficult, I think. Just a couple of paragraphs. But uh, you guys are going to be writing a how-to essay, uh, which is an explanatory essay. You're going to explain step-by-step step how something happened. So you guys are going to use Jane Goodall and her step-by-step -step process to get the chimpanzees to trust her. Because was it an immediate, no. did they trust her immediately? Nope. nope. So she took some steps to get them to trust her, right? She did this first, and then she did this. Good. So she did different things to get them to trust her, right? That's essentially what you guys are going to be writing about. It says, the assignment says, Dr. Goodall describes the process or the steps by which she earned the chimpanzee's trust. 
Review the text. So you guys might have to reread some of this to get the information, right? So reread it and write down the details and other information related to the steps that she took to get them to trust her. Then you're going to write a brief how-to essay to describe that. Um, and then this stuff is actually on the assignment that I'm going to give you. So I don't think it's posted yet. I'm going to go over to Google Classroom and post this assignment, make sure it goes really quick. And then we're going to open it up. I wouldn't close it just yet um, because you're probably going to want to reread the story and listen to the story again. So if you guys reload your Google Classroom, you should be able to head over and see the how-to essay that I just posted. I wouldn't close Savis yet because you probably still want to have the story up to help you out with this because you're going to be going using stuff directly from the story. Okay. So once you go back over to Google Classroom, go ahead and open up that how-to essay document. Everybody should have their own copy. Um, I am not going to reread it with you, but you guys can pull out headphones and listen to it on your own if you would like to. And as it's reading, write down the steps that she took. Um, or you can read it without her, without it reading to you. But um, I am going to leave it up to you guys to find the information. I'm not going to reread it with you. Okay. Yes. <laughs> well, let me explain it, and I will tell you. It's in the thing. Let me finish explaining. So first thing you need to do is the pre-writing, which is um, the uh, the planning that you need to do. Oh. Well, change it to step four. First, you need to describe the steps that Dr. Goodall took to gaining the trust of the chimpanzees. You might find five steps. You might find more. But you can probably find at least five, I would say. She took a lot of different steps, right? She tried a lot of different things. So you should be able to find at least five things. If you have more, like you find more steps, you can add more lines. In order to do that, you just kind of go over the hover over the bottom line and you right click and you can write insert row below and it'll add another row for you. So if you need to add more, go for it. But try to get at least five. So fill out the rest of this chart. You're going to describe five steps that she took to gain the trust of the chimpanzees. And then we're not going to do any editing or anything. You're just going to write your essay below. Try to write at least three. But you should be able to get between three to five paragraphs that describe how Dr. Goodall gained the trust of the chimpanzees that she wanted to study. Make sure you write them in order that goes from beginning to end. I don't want to hear she gave them bananas because that's not the first thing that she did, right? That was kind of later in the thing. She didn't give them bananas until later. So you want to make sure you go in order from beginning to end and give lots of detail. I don't just we don't want to hear she sat. They came close. She gave bananas. It's very boring, and I have to read 25 of these. So try and give me some detail, please. So get some detail in there and show me how she gained their trust. Um, does this make sense? There's only two step or um, try to get at least five sentences in a paragraph. Okay. Okay. So that's that's basically your assignment you're going to work on it for the rest of the day today well the rest of ela so you have about a half hour right now and this is what we're going to work on tomorrow during class as well so if you are not done today that is okay you have tomorrow as well one sec so for right now if you're online i'd like you to stay on for at least the next 15 minutes and working on this if and then in person make sure you're working on it as well does anybody have any questions about what needs to be done right now no.